At long last, Lotus has finally introduced their first all-new sports car model in over a decade. This has been a long time coming and I am personally very excited about it. So let's say hello to the all-new Lotus Amira. It's beautiful, isn't it? Now, if you've been following Lotus cars closely ever since DRB Highcom sold it off to Geely back in 2017, you would know that Geely, who owns 51% in Lotus, has every intention of turning it into a global, world-renowned, like properly recognized high-performance sports car brand. The first car Lotus announced post-acquisition was the Evaya, which is an insanely powerful hypercar with 2000 PS. At first glance, you can tell that the Amira's design is inspired by the Evaya, but it's a lot less complicated, which is a good thing. You'll also see hints like Ferrari, McLaren, the Ford GT, Alpine, but truthfully speaking, there's only so many ways you can style a sports car, right? I mean, even Ferrari right now, the Roma is like an Aston Martin. So all there is to it is, I guess, sharing a little bit of details with other sports car brand that makes really nice looking sports cars isn't so bad. And it's, it's not outright copying either. So it's, it's still okay. Back to the Amira. You get that nice vertical LED headlights, a unique supercar-like bonnet design like the Evaya, a slim chin but with big intakes for cooling and aerodynamics, and it has an overall profile that looks like a shrunken version of the Evaya. It's really nice, you know? More cab forward than the Evora it replaces, and the door handles are actually flush against the body so the side intakes don't receive turbulent airflow. This is very neat, almost premium even. In case you can't tell from its proportions, the Amira is still very much a mid-engine car and you can see the engine cover right through the sloping rear glass. And then you get to the rear with the nice wide haunches, wraparound LED taillights, big exhaust pipes and integrated diffuser. All corners get fitted with 20-inch wheels with newly developed Goodyear Eagle F1 Supersport or Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires. Now, the Amira rides on an all-new Lotus sports car architecture, but it's basically the same bonded extruded aluminum monocoque from before. So the chassis is very lightweight because it doesn't use uh, rivets or bolts to glue the cross members together. I just gave it away. Well, well, yeah, all the panels, the structure, they're all glued together by robots in the new facility. And make it makes the whole thing more lightweight so again it's it goes back to uh, colin chapman the founder of lotus cars uh, original motto which is simplify and then add lightness lotus said the lightest version of this car will weigh around 1400 kilos which is about 150 kilograms heavier than the evora however the footprint is more or less the same the emira is lower longer and wider but the wheelbase length is the same as the evora Judging by the photos, it shouldn't be too hard to get in and out of the car, but we'll see. The shocker to me this time is the interior design of the Amira. It is light years away from any Lotus cars we've ever seen before. I mean, there's a widescreen touch display in the middle with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard, ambient lighting on the doors and cubby holes, a fancy fully digital instrument cluster skinned with Lotus's new graphical interface layout. There's also a new multifunction steering wheel design with flat top and bottom sections, plus a mix of materials like Alcantara and leather with contrast stitching that make the cabin look a lot more inviting. Seriously, it's a monumental leap forward. There's even a 12-way adjustable function for the front seats, a 10-channel premium sound system from British audio brand KEF, and a bunch of other conveniences like electric folding side mirrors, keyless entry, and stolen vehicle tracker. There is a floating center console for automatic variants, but Lotus said manual models will get the good old semi-exposed gear linkage like we've seen on the Exige. Actually, upon closer inspection, it looks like the air conditioning dials or some of the controls there plus the widescreen display looks like it's shared with the Proton X50. Now, I know a lot of you are going to get mad for even drawing this comparison, but really, 
uh, it's it's not the first time a Lotus model has shared parts with Proton. After all, uh, the X50 is based on the Binue and Julie owns Lotus. So there's no problem. Plus, remember the Evora from before with the Persona wing mirrors? Yeah, nothing to be ashamed of really. In fact, good thing. Now, the Emira is and will be the final Lotus sports car model with an internal combustion engine. It's not a hybrid too, in case you were having doubts. The first engine that will be available right at launch is the same Toyota 2GR FE engine that is taken from the Exige and Evora. It has a displacement of 3.5 litres and is supercharged to make up to 400 horsepower and 430 newton meters of torque. This will allow it to sprint from 0 to 100 km per hour in under 4.5 seconds and reach a top speed of 290 km per hour. By mid next year, a second petrol engine will be available and that is the venerable 2-litre 4-cylinder engine supplied by Mercedes-AMG. Yes, that is right baby. Everyone's favourite 4 pot engine will be used here in the Amira and it will be specifically tuned, of course. This engine will be paired with AMG's dual clutch transmission as standard, but again, both engines are transversely mounted, sending drive exclusively to the rear wheels. Now, admittedly, it is quite a bit surprising to see Lotus not use the Volvo Drive E engine like a lot of us have speculated, but using Daimler Mercedes AMG's engine isn't very surprising. It actually makes sense because if you don't know, Geely and Daimler have a very established long-term working relationship. They've worked on many different ventures from before and they are also working on a new very premium uh, ride-hailing venture in China. Plus, they are also reviving the smart brand. If that is not enough, the founder of Geely, Li Shufu or Eric Li as he prefers to go by today, has a near 10% stake in Daimler AG, so that is worth billions of euros. Again, the whole thing is surprising, but really, it makes perfect sense. Who wouldn't want an AMG engine anyway? Okay, last but not least is the safety features. The Lotus Amira will get curtain airbags plus a number of advanced driver assist systems like adaptive cruise control, autonomous emergency braking, fatigue alert, roadside info, lane departure warning, lane change assist, and more. Now, the Amira will be built at an all-new facility in Norwich, which is very near its Hethel headquarters, and the brand new facility is called Lotus Advanced Structures. Uh, as for pricing, it's going to start at just under £60,000, so after conversion, that's about 350,000 ringgit, and if you slap on Malaysian taxes and duties, uh, which we all know and love, it would probably bring the price to 700,000 ringgit, so double the conversion rate. Just to let you know, 60,000 pounds is right about where the Evora was used to be priced, so I think that is a good starting point. And uh, I'll just pluck out a rival out of thin air, that would be the Porsche Cayman, its lifelong rival. Which would you pick, the Lotus Amira or the Porsche Cayman? And which engine would you go for? A Toyota engine, supercharged 3.5 litre engine, or the AMG 2 litre 4 cylinder engine, which sounds the bomb? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And I uh, just want to thank you all for watching. Stay safe out there and hope to see you guys really soon. And uh, bye bye.